It's April Fool's Day and the world has never seemed worse. Now you must be thinking, why so glum, JD? Look outside. The sun is shining, the grass is growing, and the bunnies are humping each other. So what's there to really complain about? I'll tell you in today's episode of JD's Two Cents. Ha! Happy April Fool's Day! That was a horrible April Fool's joke, wasn't it? I'm sorry about that. I'll try to think of more funny jokes next time. So, before I get down to the nitty gritty, I have a couple of friends who watch my vlog, and some of you have said, number one, back away from the camera, because all you see is my head, and that's not exactly, you know, the, the most impressive thing. And number two, talk as if you're hyped up on Red Bull, because sometimes my voice just gets kind of boring. So, before I get to the news, let's uh, talk about something interesting that I've noticed. You ever gone walking down the street, you know, minding your own business, bobbing your head to the latest Akon or Kanye soundtrack, or Miley Cyrus, if that floats your boat, and you notice someone walking in the opposite direction, and all of a sudden they look at you? And I'm not just talking about a quick glance or anything, but they, they stare at you with these beady little eyes. And they look at you like this. And you quickly turn away because that just gets kind of awkward. But then, just to be sure, you look again. But no, there they are, staring at you, your eyes meeting each other. And you have no idea who that person is. What should you do in those situations? Do you wave back or something? Or do you stare back at them and say, Stop looking at me and go watch the bunnies hump each other. Tell me if that ever happens to you. Yo, homeboy, what's poppin' in the hood, dog? I promise to never do that again. But yeah, have you ever had your friends say that to you? It's kind of hard to say something after that, isn't it? Like, do you go with the flow and say, Yeah, dog, I'm chillin'. Or do you say, Oh, I'm quite good, sir, thank you. I'm having my cup of tea with my pinky pointed up. I'm really sorry for my impersonations. I hope I didn't offend anyone. The first news article of the day comes from Texas. Dallas police officer Robert Powell apologized to the public and to the Moats family a day after the police department expressed their extreme embarrassment. Just in case you didn't know, Powell stopped Houston Texan running back Ryan Moats because he ran a red light on his way, and here's the funny part, he was on his way to see his dying mother-in-law in the hospital. It's not like he was even joyriding. Yo, don't be making fun of the joyriders, man. Hey, troll, just get out of here. And in Powell's uh, statement to the public, he said, and I quote, I wish to sincerely apologize to the Moats family, my colleagues in the po Dallas Police Department, and to all those who have been rightfully angered by my actions. After stopping Mr. Moat's vehicle, I showed poor judgment and insensitivity. Oh, and by the way, the clip is in the description box over there if you want to check it out. Powell had to write him a ticket, give him a lecture, even after the nurse from the hospital stepped outside and said, oh, Excuse me, officer, please stop being a racist douche. Okay, she didn't really say it like that. But, you get the point. Well, I've decided to come up with my own segment called the Finger of Shame. This Finger of Shame goes to Robert Powell. How would you punish him? The example could be like this. Hang him by his tidy whities and tickle him with a feather. Woo! Woo! So yeah, leave all your creative responses below. Let's move on. It's about the auto industry in Detroit. The Big Three. General Motors CEO Rick Wagoner got his <laughs> kicked by the White House. He stepped down after the White House advised him. Fire! Back in December, when General Motors and Chrysler got $17 billion from the government to help them survive this financial crisis, 
One of the uh, conditions was that they had to restructure themselves. And even after Wagner assured the public and the White House that he was going to take the right actions to restructure the company and make them more financially viable, he did nothing. Of course. Of course, all three automakers want more money from the government, but President Obama said if they want that, then they have to restructure themselves. Which unfortunately means that a lot of people are going to lose their jobs and there's going to have to be some policy changes about benefits and pensions. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. And Chrysler has to work out this partnership with Italian automaker Fiat uh, that's worth a couple of billion dollars. That I'll put a link up on the sidebar just in case you guys want to read up on that. Oh, and one last thing. I have to give a shout out to my cousin Lucy. So that was JD's Two Cents. Happy April Fool's Day. I hope you guys stay informed and stick around. Peace, dogs.